Okay, folks. So, welcome back to another podcast by You Are Ability. And for anybody who doesn't know, You Are Ability is a platform for health and well being and motivation and business. And um, it's sponsored mainly by ourselves here at TCTS Group. So, the podcast is really to give people uh, access to organizations and help and support uh, to business minds and to open doors as well as mass networking. So at the moment, what we were planning to do, we had a number of uh, podcasts and a number of people lined up and a number of topics lined up. And um, we have today on as a guest, Mr. Niall Green from uh, Niall Green uh, Counseling. Um, we'll speak to Niall here in a wee second, but our whole format has changed because we were going to speak about mental health and we we're going to speak about um, addiction. And it was really um, an extension of the night we done in Listen Ski on the 23rd of December. Um, last year but guys unfortunately we have um we're in a situation at the moment um which a lot of people don't know what to do they don't know um how what control measures to put in place uh, a lot of people's panicking they're freaking out they're getting anxious and even from myself my own point of view as a business owner as an employer and um, as a father uh, there's a lot of stuff happening at the moment so what we've done guys is we've got Niall uh, on the other line here we're going to try and record this as well for some of our social media platforms. But anyway, Niall, welcome. Thanks, Stephen. So um, as Stephen said, I'm Niall Green. I'm a local counsellor here in Fermanagh. Um, I'm also a founding director of Adult ADHD NI. Um, last week, we were supposed to, last Friday, we were supposed to uh, do this, but I, I pulled out at the last minute. And... The reason why I pulled out, Stephen, um, is I needed to process what was going on here. And I know um, last week w w the, the, the aim was for this to be an extension of what we did um, around Christmas time, talking about mental health and depression and strategies around that. Around that. But all everything that's happened in the last few weeks has, has changed that. And, and it's not that those subjects aren't relevant. I just think that... Um, it's it's not quite what people need at the minute. Now we will obviously be talking about um, depression, anxiety, um, addictions. You know, uh, as we go on, and hopefully we're, we're going to be doing this more regular. But this week, I, I think it was important to to talk about what is going on. You know, and yeah. and, and 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 coping strategies, tools that people can use that 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 might be helpful for them during this time. So. Yeah, absolutely. So as I say, if anybody's watching this especially, just bear with me because I'm trying to reach over to emails and I'm trying to reach over to the phone as well because we had asked, um, put up on social media for anybody to, if they want to ask Niall any questions in particular. So as you said, Niall, we're not going to follow that format, you know, question by question because the whole situation has changed. But I will monitor them. I will, I will float down by them um, and see what people really want to know you know um at the moment now in your in your feeling okay or in your mind uh what do you think what do you think um people are feeling at the moment well they're they're feeling worried you know they're worried about their loved ones they're worried about themselves they're you know they're worried about what is going on they're worried about their jobs they're feeling frightened terrified and um, they're feeling helpless and that's that's the that's the feeling that everybody's carrying and and it's 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 like the virus it's kind of it's spread and it and um and 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 we it, it um if it's not managed people can feed into it and it can make it worse you know the the, the anxiety can get worse if you you know people can look into the just constantly talking about the negatives around this can make the feeling more and more intense a lot of people are, are describing you know they're feeling it in their stomach you know i feel it myself to be honest with you at times you know you have this it kind of it, it comes in waves too much a lot of news exposure you know what is going on and and if you if, if you're watching the death tolls and stuff like that there of the amount of people that are dying and, and and people are comparing you know they're looking at what's going on in italy and they're thinking oh my god this is this is going to happen to us and what are we going to do and so so there's a lot of fear and uncertainty and and um 
and, and aside from the, the, the actual virus itself, it's the uncertainty. How are we going to feed our families? How are we going to pay our mortgages? You know, um, you know what is the after, uh, aftermath of this going to be like? So, so that's what people are feeling. And that's very true. And I think also that um, this is the, the, the main time, probably in, in my lifetime anyway, where anything that you have does not matter. You know what I mean? The nice cars, the nice house, the, the salary that you're on, and the job that you have, nothing, nothing matters now at this moment in time. Um, and I think that in a certain way will help people as well. But from, in your experience maybe, or, in, or what, what do you think the impact is gonna have as well on the likes of the NHS staff? At the minute, they're doing a fantastic job. They're absolutely flat out. What about the aftermath of that? You know, I know you probably work with a lot of guys in that sector, but um, is there any advice you can give them that, that, that are listening to this? Any nurses, any doctors, any, any you know, frontline staff, even down as far as, I was speaking to someone the other day and their father was a cleaner in one of the hospitals and he is just shitting himself. He's shitting himself, but he is prepared to still go into work every day. And he is prepared to wipe down the beds and wipe down the machinery and wipe down the hands and the doors. And, um, you know, is there any advice you'd give to family members that are currently working in that um, sector? Well, I suppose the first thing that popped into my head, Stephen, about the aftermath of all of this. Yeah. Um, for, for people that, that come through this and, and, and survive this. The first thing that I would say is the sense of pride that, that, that they should feel having gone through this. You yes. know, that... To me, I think, you know, these people are, are risking their lives and their loved ones for us. Now, you know, and, and again, this is a community effort. You know, um, it's about, it's about us, re us as a community recognising, you know, the efforts that's being done. You know, um, you know, like, I'll give you an example. This morning, um, before I uh, before I came to work, so I'm working now. I'm working. All my uh, counseling sessions are via um, via Skype and Zoom. But on the on the way to work, um, I called called into a local shop, and I was I was I was standing in the queue and I was looking at the two the two shop workers, and I was sitting thinking, these these two shop workers are are risking their their lives and the lives of their loved ones and their friends to come and be of service to me, right? So, um, so I, as I was being served, I said, um, I said to, the, to the, the person who was, who was serving me, I said, fair play to you for doing this while all this is going on, thanks. And the person, of course, typical for Ma, typical for Mana <laughs> person who doesn't we, we don't we don't like to take compliments very well. So the person was like, oh, not at all. She what else would you be doing? And I said, and and I said, it's yeah, yeah but it's important that it's recognised. It's important yes, yeah. that that the effort is recognised. Yeah. You know, so so that's what we need to be doing. We 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 have a tendency when we panic. To, to think about the self, right? And and that's not going to work. You know, yeah, we have yeah. to we have to really, really think of the community and the group. And I, I remember I remember um this an old psychotherapist that I went to years ago. He, um great psychotherapist, by the way, he was he was amazing. But I remember this analogy that he used to give. It was it was from a I actually have the book over there. It's from an old, it's from a psychotherapy text, but it's like an old Jewish parable. Now, I don't know it word for word, but this is the gist of it, right? So this guy dies, right? And he, he, um, he meets, say, God or <laughs> St. Peter or whatever it is, right? Yes. If it's a Jewish parable, it's hardly St. Peter. But anyway, you get what I mean? So he meets, he, he, he meets, um, God in the afterlife, whatever, right? And they're walking up this corridor, right? And they open this door, right? And there's a big, there's a big round table, right? And and there's people all around the table, right? And and they're they're all malnourished, 
they're all really, really malnourished and sickly looking, right? But in the middle of the table, there's a big pot of stew, a big, big pot of stew, lovely, delicious beef stew or if you're vegetarian, vegetarian, whatever, right? And, and every single one of the individuals around the table have these big long spoons, right? So this is the parable of the long spoons, right? And they're all reaching in with their long spoons, right? To get the stew, right? And they're reaching in, right? And then they go to feed themselves, right? But the spoon's too long. Yes. And when they go to eat this, it's, when they go to take, the, put the food into the mouth, the food spills all around them and they can't get it, they can't eat it because it keeps spilling around themselves. So they're malnourished and hungry, right? And the guy goes, what's this? He says, this is hell, right? So close the door, walk up the corridor, they open the door, right? And inside this room, there's a big round table, right? And a big pot of stew in the middle of the table, right? But around this table, everybody's all well fed and they're all happy and they're having the crack and they're enjoying and they're just, it's just a great atmosphere going on in this room, right? But the difference is they've all got their long spoons, but instead of trying to feed themselves, they're feeding each other. And that's what you call it. That's, that, that analogy is how groups function. That's how communities function. Now, at the minute, all we're being asked to do is stay at home, keep your distance, wash your hands. And, and that's the main things that we can do. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's really, that's our war effort. That's how we save lives. Yes, yes. Right? Well, you see, you see all these posts at the moment from, you know, guys back in, you know, uh, World War II and, you know, out fighting and all. And, and that's what they're saying. You know, people always hear me talk about the pacification of the nation. But <laughs> this is a perfect example when, you know, we're not out expected to um, put ourselves on the front line. All we have to do is stay at home and watch TV, you know. Yes. But a couple of things as well. Last Sunday, uh, I was in the office and um, I put a video up on social media. And the video was really just to, to say that, and this is before Boris made any announcements, but... Last Sunday, I'd, the amount of people that were walking around our training centre, people that um, you would never, ever see walking, ever. They wouldn't walk the length themselves. And all of a sudden, now they're out walking in groups and groups and groups, you know. So, um, you know, even, even the other night, uh, I put up a post from someone that I follow all the time, uh, with the late Jim Rowan. And one thing that stuck out uh, in my mind from his stand years ago was to, uh, you know, always, always guard the door to your mind. So at the moment now, what can people do? You know, yes, we can sit at home and we can wash our hands and all, but if people are so mad to leave the house now, I suppose it's like being a kid, when you're told you're, you're not allowed something, you always want it. So like, yeah. what can people do from a mental point of view, you know, from their own, um, um, you know, how, what would you say, remain insane? So yeah, so what, what we're talking here is, is um, developing methods of self-care. On, on how to manage this new new reality. Yes. So I, I, I'm not um, I'm not the type of counsellor therapist. In fact, it's the last thing a, a therapist should be doing is, is giving advice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna this isn't advice. This is some guidance, you know, mm -hmm. as to how to how to to, to manage your manage your day or manage um, your, your isolation. So this is, a, this is about creating a structure in your day, right? So think of it like I say, right? And you, you can, you know, write this down or try and try and use this as, as, as your guide, right? So think about it, break it into like an hour for each of these things, right? So one hour every day, of doing something productive, right? So productive during this time is like planning your week or planning planning the day ahead. If you you know that will like if you if you spend an hour planning the week ahead, especially if you've got kids or you know and you've got 
you know, responsibilities or even just the responsibility to yourself to make you feel a lot better because because you're creating you're creating your structure and you're also planning for the future. It's outside. So that so again, this uh, I'm gonna go slightly back here, Stephen, right? Part of the issue of what's going on here is so everybody so 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 it's what everybody's experiencing is it's like death anxiety, right? You know, the terror of what if I die, what if someone, what if someone I love dies, right? So it's, it paralyzes you, right? It leaves you that you can't, you, you can't do anything. And like some people with anxiety live with this regardless of the coronavirus, you know? So, so, yeah, you yeah. know, Irvine Yalom, he believes that all anxiety, um, oh gosh, this, just one second. We're just we're live here, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're okay, you're okay. We're, but but I'm, I'm just highlighting the fact there that now that it, it might go up straight away, but it is live. We're not going to cut it, we're not going to edit it. It's just it is what it is. But all right, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. So, you know, all all anxiety, Irvine Yalom believes that all anxiety is rooted in, in, in a, a death anxiety, fear of de fear of your own death or fear of other people dying or whatever, right? So, so that's, that's debatable. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that, I, that theory at the minute. But what we're talking about here is a sense of powerlessness, right? Now, I was given this philosophy 15 years ago. It was a simple, it was through a, through a prayer. So I, I'm a, a recovering alcoholic and an addict, right? And in, in Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, um, the fellow addicts listening will, will, will know this, what I'm about to say, but there's a prayer at the end of it that everybody says, it's called the serenity prayer, right? And the serenity prayer is, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I can't change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, the end, the end of that is the, is the most important part. The wisdom to know the difference between the things that I can change and the things that I can't change, right? Now, the, the coronavirus, and the way it's going to spread, if I'm going to die, if my loved ones are going to die, if my, um, if, if my you know, friends or outside, it's, I can't control that. I have no power, I have no influence over that as a, as a whole. Now, now what I, well, so, so if I can accept that, right, that frees me up to looking at what I can control. So yeah. what I can control is I can wash my hands. Right now, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to die, but it means that I can. It's something that I can do. It's you know, I'm not completely powerless. I can do that. Right, I can stay at home. I can keep my social distance, and 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 this list of things that we're about to talk about now, Stephen. So I can be productive again. You know, so plan in my week. I can prepare a meal for my family. I can tidy up my room. You know, as Jordan Peterson says, how how do you expect to get anything done in the world if you can't tidy your own bloody bedroom? You know, so 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 these things are in my control. So in a day, there's stuff I can do. You know, another thing is just living a day at a time. I'm alive today. My family's okay. You know that. You know my fa You know my. Um, you know what can I do to enhance their experience and my experience? So another thing I can do is exercise, right? So. I, to be honest with you, I don't think, I, see in the last couple of weeks, I don't think I've ever been as fit. <laughs> I'm naturally an unfit person. Yes. And, that's, and, and, and that, that, that's the craze all around the place at the moment, you know? Which yeah, is a bad thing. You know? yeah, I'm doing press. It's, it's great. And, and, and hopefully it, it continues. But so, so whether that's going out, going out for a walk, keeping social distancing, you know, you, you're still allowed to go out with our, you know, we're still allowed to go out as a unit together, as long as you're keeping, keeping social distancing, you know, at the minute, now this could change in the next week or two, we don't know, but yeah. you can also do like, there's great stuff going on at the minute, um, Core NA, we do this, we, we can be on this thing where 11 o'clock every, if you follow Core NA, they're doing these like half hour routines, and they're not real heavy routines, you know, it, it really is just movement and raising your heart rate, and you feel, you feel like a bit of a bollock, <laughs> for want of a yes, better word yeah. when you're doing it, but it's good crack, and then at the end of it, you do feel better, and, and I, that's, what we're, that's what we're doing, and that's what I'm suggesting that people do. Um, Ryan, Ryan McCust, 
Ray McCluskey and Cahal Beacom here um, from Focus and Skilling. They're they're all also going to be running, you know, videos and exercise routines. I think they're uh, um, tomorrow they're running one. So so right. follow these things on, on, on Facebook and, and get involved and and, 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 and and follow these structures. You know, I think I think yeah, and I think you're right about the getting involved. Getting involved is a big thing. Because where we're from, especially, not just from Northern Ireland as a whole, um, when last night people were going out at 8 o'clock to, to give a round of applause for their NHS workers, you know, in the area you lived, yes, a lot of people done it in fair play, but, you know, you went to England and what have you, and um, England, Scotland, Wales, they were literally out in their droves. So the getting involved is a massive thing. You know, we see it all the time with people getting involved online, sitting at home thinking, ah, that's stupid. I'm watching that boy in the, on YouTube and he's, he's, you know, he's doing star jumps. I'm embarrassed to doing it. One thing that I have seen even is through the yoga platforms, the amount of people that's doing online yoga. Um, and when you think about it, it's perfect. You know, you, you don't have to go into a room and sweat all over people and be embarrassed of uh, what, yeah, you yeah. what you can't do. It's brilliant. One thing as well, Niall, I, I just want to hit on here because when I kind of zone through the, the, you know, a lot of the questions and all that's coming in, there is, let me see, there's three main words that's coming up here throughout all the questions, and it's fear, panic, and hopelessness. That, mm. that, that's all you hear people talking about, you know? And I fully agree with you. We cannot control the external factors whatsoever, but we can control the inter internal factors, you know? Mm. Um, what what what's your feeling on that? What's your what's your um, outtake on you know people using the word fear and panic and hopelessness? Hopelessness is a big yeah. one. So so the good thing the good thing about that, Stephen, is that people are identifying the feeling. You know, so so again, that actually that question actually ties into the next part, which is the social interaction, right? Yeah. So, so 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 social interaction can be um, a telephone call. You know, making a, a conscious effort to to contact somebody who, you know, who you haven't spoken in a while. You know, and you know, um, like, like for example, let's say, let's say with with communities such as Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous, or where these people have been relying on each other to maintain recovery. You yeah. know, so so in you know, doing this. You know, contacting, you know, creating like Zoom groups, you know, so so people can 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 have that identification. You know, there's nothing as powerful as as me saying, you know, I'm feeling fearful, hopeful, hopeless, and panicking, and 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 hearing someone saying, I hear what you're saying, I because I feel the same too, and having that connection, you know, you know that that my feelings, the stuff that I'm going through at the minute, is valid, and instead of me keeping it in here. You know, I'm I'm sharing it or keeping it in. You know, keeping it inside. You, you communicate it. You know, you share it yes, with the group yeah. so you're not containing it all inside of yourself. Now, again, with, with with, I think, you know, without sound self you know self promoting, counselling and psychotherapy is is amazing for helping you to come. You know, to to um, manage your your thoughts and feelings and and and, and communicate and help you to understand your your emotional reactions because because when we what happens with our feelings right sometimes so let's say if we're not if we're not good with our emotions right if if i if i suppress my emotions my panic my fear um my hopelessness right and it's so what you do is you suppress it or right and picture it being like a, a balloon Stephen, right yeah. And the air, so the air going into the balloon is suppressed emotions, right? And the more you suppress your emotions and, and without releasing the pressure, the yeah. balloon gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then what happens with all those emotions is they get, they get converted. And they, 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 they get converted into anger. So instead of communicating, instead of communicating helplessness, or, or fear, you communicate anger and frustration and, and it gets directed out the way or it gets directed inwards and that's where you have de depression and you know, you know, thoughts of self-harming you know, and, 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 and that increases the sense of hopelessness 
right? So, so, so the more the more we can find avenues of, of, of talking about how we feel, the, the, the more options um, that we can see. You know, it, it really is, sometimes our own heads are not the best um, places for advice. Sometimes yeah. if you communicate yeah. your thoughts and your feelings and, and, and hear it reflected back, then that's the best way to get your answers. Yeah. But I want I, I, I want people to listen to this very very carefully because um, earlier on when me and you were speaking you you were asked me how I was doing and asked about feelings and I was saying Neil seriously a bench press three hundred kg what are you talking about there's no feelings <laughs> but what, but one of the big things that did come up um, is when you were talking about that is the 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 feeling of guilt at the moment from an employer point of view you know now this is nothing to do with um uh you know business it's nothing to do with being a boss it's just this the situation that we're in at the moment and with the situation that we're in you know you're you're trying to um you're trying to make sure your staff are still looked after you know the government's telling us to shut down the first and deputy first minister is telling us if you don't shut down we will shut you down and then um, when other companies have went to the wall and other companies are playing it safe and just you know get rid of all the staff um, personally, you know, I'm fighting and fighting in the background here to make sure my staff are protected as best I can. So I suppose when you, as you say, when you turn into a feeling, it's the feeling of guilt. Then you go home then and um, last night I uh, took my son out for um, up into one of the big mountains for a walk for a bit of fresh air and all. But you still have that feeling of guilt. You know, are you being selfish getting him out for some fresh air because he could catch something? Or are you selfish by letting him sit in the house all the time? Do you know what I mean? So, yes, I want you to listen to this, folks, because, um, again, without Niall asking me that, and without Niall, I suppose, pulling that out of me, subconsciously, just explaining, you know, um, the put it into a feeling as such. So, yeah, definitely, definitely listen into this, guys, because um, it doesn't matter how good you are, how good you think you are. At this moment in time, nothing matters. Do you know what I mean? Your, your business doesn't really matter. Your wealth doesn't matter. Your your um you know what you drive or where you live nothing that matters at all um another thing here Niall, too as well um do you have any thoughts on the likes of meditation you know to to clear your mind and get yourself into a better space so so again that 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 taps into the next thing that i was going to talk about was um quiet time right so if you so what we talked about an hour of we talked about an hour of being productive, an hour of exercise, an hour of social interaction, you know, with friends or loved ones, or just sitting around, you know, the table and the, you know having dinner with, with your family and, and, and ensuring that you're not isolating in your your room and, and watching too much news and all that there crack. So quiet time, so quiet time is like, you know. And, and I think families need to work together to allow each other to have that quiet time. Yeah, so yeah. an hour of quiet time, maybe half an hour in the morning or half an hour in the evening or maybe the hour in one go, but yeah. ensuring that you, you put this in. Now, meditation and mindfulness, of course, you know, and, and some people, a lot of, like in this day and age, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that are, would roll their eyes at the idea of, me, of mm -hmm. meditation. What are you talking about? Yeah. And, and, and meditation is, meditation to me is real, real powerful. And the two of them kind of go, go side and side. So, so mindfulness is just staying in the moment, you know, trying to be in the moment. And, you know, instead of worrying about what's going on in the future, or worrying about what's going on in the past. So, so let's say it's about me sitting on my own, having made a cup of tea and just trying to focus on the tea, drinking the tea, the taste of the tea, the smell of the tea, the, the feeling of the tea. So that's mindfulness, yeah. staying present. Very hard to do, very hard to maintain because your your mind is always active. It's all it's always looking. Your mind's always looking for you not to be present. Yeah, right? well, you so, know, you, you, you know something. That's a that, it's, it's a perfect point you make because yesterday evening when I was heading home, um, I seen this group, this this family out out walking, you know. And there was the, the mother and father, and I think there was four kids or five kids, whatever it was. But one of the, the wee kids had their bike out, and the front wheel went over the other child's dress. She was wearing a ballerina outfit, as you do, and they kind of put her back a wee bit, you know. But as I was driving by real slow, I had the window down in the car, and the father just lost the head, you know, and he was shouting and roaring at them. Now, from my point of view, that's where he needs his own time. 
because you know he, he probably feels guilty by not going out with the whole family for a walk in the evening but he needs his own time you know mommy needs her own time you know the teenagers need their own time so as a, as actually a good point you bring up there absolutely yeah and then and then that outburst of anger then so let's say if you're talking about in terms of the balloon that we talked about so the balloon pops right because you've had an outburst of anger yeah and then yeah. what happens then is it's like starting a whole new balloon and now you've started now feeling guilty so now you feel guilty, yeah. which is now the new pressure that starts in the new balloon that begins, right? And this is how it goes. So you keep your feelings in and, and then pop. Now, what, what the meditation can do is, so I, like, there's lots of techniques. There's lots of techniques for meditation, but one that I would use is, is just a very simple breathing meditation. And I, like, I'm big into, like, if you're going to do meditation, you know, you create a routine for your meditation, right? Yeah. So whether that's um, lighting a candle, lighting a wee bit of incense, all that stuff, it's not nonsense, believe it or not. When you create these, um, create these routines, your brain starts to realize, okay, we're going into quiet time, we're going into meditation. So it's almost like the, 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 the ritual of, of light the candle, the ritual of light the meditation triggers parts of your brain and, and the more you practice it, the easier it is then to go into the, 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 that meditative space. Now what you're doing is the goal of, of meditation is not to think, you know, to have no thoughts and, and, and that takes practice. So, so what you do is, so think of your breathing, relaxed breathing is um, one, one type of relaxed breathing is breathing in through your nose for seven seconds and out through your mouth slowly for 11 seconds. Now, that may not be comfortable for everyone, but the point is that your in-breath is shorter than your out-breath. Mm -hmm. So whether that's in for five, out for seven, or in for seven, out for 11, whatever that may be, right? And for every in-out breath that you take, right, count in your mind one, mm -hmm. right, two, three now and, and the goal is to try and get to 10 without having a thought now it, it, it'll not happen the so hard, so hard. it's so hard your brain's constantly looking to think so you so your brain might think gee you might be you might get as far as three and your brain will think god i'd love a bacon sandwich or something like that there you know random and, and you go <laughs> and now you're sitting contemplating on a bacon sandwich when you should be meditating so so once you notice that you're not thinking of your breathing you go mm. oh back back to me breathing for five jesus them bills that i need to pay da, 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 da. and then and then and then you realize that you're you're thinking again yeah and you, yeah. you keep going back to your breathing right yeah and what, you, and what you're doing is you're, you're calming your whole nervous system you're slowing your thoughts down and and through meditation it's like you know like prayer is asking and meditation is like receiving you know, if you get what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 so you may not receive your epiphany while you're meditating, but the next day you might come up with an answer as to you know issues or problems that you're going through. You might, you might, people might say, "Gosh, you know, people might start being a wee bit more friendly to you because you're you're giving off a different vibration or a different energy because yeah. you're that wee bit calmer." So yeah. again, practicing that and mindfulness again is useful, and there's loads of books on it. So again. Back to my list here, Stephen. So an hour of being productive, an hour of exercise, an hour of social interaction, an hour, um, an hour of quiet time, right? The meditation and the reading, right? And then an hour of getting outside. So, so whether it's getting out in the garden, doing something in the garden, or going for a walk when there's nobody about, and making sure you're keeping that social distance. We need to be, we need to be outside, you know, you know, for our own well-being, that that will lift your mood. You yeah, know, yeah. And, and and you know, for some people with depression and anxiety, this see this social, you know, staying socially isolated. For a lot of people, they've been living their lives like this. But but this guidance is good for anybody, whether you have depression, you're you have anxiety, or you've developed these symptoms because of what's happening. Yes. Um, another thing that would be useful is. In this time, you know, people are like, what are we going to do? Well, there's lots of things you can do. You know, you can learn something, you know, learn, learn an instrument, you know, online. You know, or you could even do like a Zoom Zoom lessons with people, you know, or you could uh, lear learn a language. 
I am not doing that, by the way. I was, <laughs> I'm not just my brain doesn't work like that. I cannot learn language. Um, I, I, I practice the guitar. <laughs> um, so learn an instrument. You can't skill up. You can't. You know. You can you, you can skill up, and that's yeah, what I tell a lot of people, and even even a lot of our staff as well. You know, the, this is the time now to make yourself more attractive to the marketplace and to the you know to your workplace. And although people are thinking, oh, well, I'm making a, a job now for three or four months, but you can spend that time making yourself, skilling yourself up, um, you know, in, 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 any, in any sense, really. Um, you talked about it there earlier, St Stephen, when we were, were talking on a one-to-one. -one. You were saying that, that you have, like, business ideas and that you're putting stuff into place and, you, you know, you can see stuff, you know, you can see, you know, business six months down the line and stuff. And, and, and that's... Again, that's using your own creativity and your innovation, and and it's there's a, there's a coping strategy part of that as well for you. Mm -hmm. But again, you see what you're doing there, Stephen, is this you're focusing on the things that you can control. That's right. That's right. The, the coronavirus, you know, and, and 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 whether you will get it or not, and although you can reduce the chances, you know, you're we're quite powerless over a lot of this yes, stuff. Yes, we're exactly. not powerless in every aspect of our lives so we have control we have we have sir, we have um, elements of control in our life and we can make our lives better and, yes. and, and a thing that i think in this time as well and this is the most important part of of psychotherapy and counseling is is for me therapy and counseling is all about developing a positive relationship with yourself yeah now, my fear would be for the likes of people with addictions, and you know, I, I'm talking all the addictions, is that they fall into the trap of of using their their addictions as coping mechanisms, you know, of avoidance, right? While this time could be used as time to recover and to develop a positive relationship with yourself. The most yeah. important relationship that you're ever going to have is the relationship with yourself, and um, so this is a good time for it. Yeah. Um, and, and lastly, Stephen, lastly, in relation to that list of things is, is reducing your intake of news. Yes. Yeah. There's only so much of this anybody can take. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's all negative. Get, it's all negative. It and it just, it just leaves you like, oh, what do we do? And it, it makes you like jelly inside. And mm -hmm. so that you just, you just have to switch it off. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? You know, you know, you cannot yeah. be just, you know. And this is, this is, a, you know, this is a worldwide issue. This isn't something that just, that you've done something wrong and has came to you. This is, everybody is in the shit bucket here at the moment, you know. And from my point of view, I think that this is, a, this is the time when appreciation will really come into place, you know. Mm -hmm. And anybody who tries to do a bit of self-development or to try and work on themselves at all, it all starts with appreciation. You know, you have to appreciate the most stupidest, simple things. Like, for example, we all have to wash our hands, you know, more regular. But where's the appreciation for turning on the tap and the water coming out? Where's the appreciation for having soap there or sanitizer or whatever it is? You know, the appreciation needs to be there. From your point of view, Niall, how important is appreciation? Yeah, so, so what you're talking about there, Stephen, is the attitude of gratitude. And again, so, so, the, so when you're... Like I personally, I personally meditate before I go to bed, so that's my time. And before I meditate, I kind of like try and set an intention for the meditation, whether it's to ease anxiety or to you know to be able to manage my emotions better. Or and another part of that then is is the gratitude. Some people like have gratitude journals, which is really good. So writing down writing down the things that are here in this present moment that you are grateful for, and see at the minute, I am grateful for a hell of a lot of things in my life. Like this whole thing has made me so grateful, like for for the simplest things, simplest thing. just the fact that my that, that I'm able to lift the phone to my loved ones or have my loved ones near me, to hug the people that I love, like you're really thinking, gee, you know, th these people are so precious to me. Um, another thing, Stephen, uh, as well, is to, to reflect on, and, and, and again, like, I was thinking about young people, right? Yeah. Like we grew up, 
we grew up during the Troubles. Like I, so I was like a child of the Troubles grow, growing yes. up. And, um, and I'd imagine adults that, that saw us growing up as children in the Troubles probably roll their eyes and think, you didn't really, fuck, you, you, you weren't processing what was going on here. And, and, and the same way that we would, you know, look at young people post, you know, you know, you know, yes, since, yeah. You know, since the Good Friday Agreement, we we look at young ones and go, "You have no idea <laughs> what we went through," because we we remember what it was like. Now, the, the young people today, you know, like young teenagers and stuff, you know, for them to to reflect on this is this is like when you are older, you know, when all the coronavirus has passed, you know, you are going to be the you are going to be talking to your kids and your grandkids about the, the time when everything shut down. Yeah, the time when we all had to, the time when we all had to stay at home for for so that we could save lives, mm -hmm. and 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 think about the, think about the sense of pride that you'll feel, you know, to, to reflect on how you feel having come through come through this, yeah. you know, and I yeah. think that's a real positive thing, you yeah. know, and, and it'll help us through these these times as well. So there is positives, and 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 there. You're you're one hundred percent right. It's it, it's it's gratitude and it's it's being caring and it's you know caring for others and you know not taking this for granted and and, and self care and I, I think I think I probably bombarded you with with enough there, Stephen. But well, listen, listen. At, at this moment in time, Niall, and the last time uh, last week when we, when we had another podcast to do. Is at this time when people, you know, you were talking there earlier about an hour for this and an hour for that and an hour for that. And, you know, straight away in my mind thinks, where is this man getting the time out of? But at the moment when people are sitting at home, they still have 24 hours. They're not taking eight hours for work out of that. They have a hell of a long day, you know. So even if they only were awake for, say, 10 hours before they would have been eight hours at work, you know what I mean? Right. So it's vital, as you know, to maybe maximise it out that wee bit for um for an hour. Another thing I wanted to hit on here as well, because a lot of questions coming in, um, especially now from yourself, from you know addiction and, and things like that. If someone is in the situation at the moment, I I was telling someone this the other day. And Monday I was going to work, and um, obviously with everybody else working remotely at home, and I'm the only one that's coming into the office. And um, I had to go the back road in between certain building, and I seen these guys, you know, the old one with the pound coin tapping on the window and letting them back into the back of some of the bars. I'll not say where it is because they're all letting shut down. But some people can look at that and think, Jesus Christ, are you for real? Are you for real? You really have to get in there just to get a drink, like seriously. But from somebody who is suffering from alcohol uh, dependency, Niall, how important is it for them and what can they do? You know, what can they do at the moment where they, they might be fit to get the alcohol the way that they could have got it before this? Well, I, I'll definitely not be given advice on how they can they can get their alcohol, but <laughs> but, but, I, but what I would say to you is you see, addiction's one of those addiction's one of those funny things, and I know this from my own personal experience, you know, in recovery myself and having been at thousands of Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and, and, and seeing, you know, interacting with addicts. And um, the, the unfortunate thing around addiction is addicts tend to have to hit a rock bottom, you know, and, and for each, you know, the level of pain that an alcoholic um, has to experience before they, that they can have that change is so you know it's it, it's it's different for every single individual some yeah. some people and and I cannot understand it some people will just you know just keep going until the very end and and you know there's a the set like like I, I can like for myself I didn't think I had a I didn't think I had an alcohol or a drug problem I thought that I had a money problem mm -hmm. if I just had enough money Yes. I would have no problems. So that's that's <laughs> that's the point. That's yeah. the perspective of, of of an alcoholic, and 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 also a sense of hopelessness. You know, you know, like, like yeah. you know, my life is of no value. My life is of no value. That's that's the that's the view of a lot of people with um, alcoholism or, or drug addiction, and um, and. Well, 
and they go I know it's and again it's strange times you know for for alcoholics in in recovery or ad, ad, drug addicts or gamblers or whatever but there are methods of reaching out um to get support you know and, and I think the I think the the recovery you know like the alcoholics anonymous secretaries and the narcotics anonymous they, they, they need to find a way of of, of having meetings kind of like this here via yeah, zoom yeah. and and so that so that people can still have their their meetings but again for me recovery for me was finding people that were like me that understood where I was coming from. I don't want to hear somebody telling me what to do. I want to hear somebody that has been through it, that yeah. understands what it's like to be, that understands my head. I wouldn't yes. take it in other ways. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, the, the pain, you know, I couldn't take the pain anymore. So I had to change. So it was either that or something, you know, you know, I just couldn't take it anymore, and you can read between the lines and that. Yes, yeah. And 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 I found a lifeline through the meetings, and the other part of that then was my own psychotherapy. So it, it again was like it was a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. it, it 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 helped me to find a space where I could understand myself, understand my past, understand the relationship that I had with myself, and 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 then tweak it. You know, yeah. change actually change how you relate to yourself and once you start changing how you relate to yourself um, your relationship with the world around you starts to change as well as how people relate to you yes, and, and, yeah. and I understand your defense mechanisms and all that there but we can talk about that again you know I think we could dedicate a whole podcast to that yeah, yeah. well mean? that's that that's one of the things you know because on the last time and uh, the open night we had um, just before Christmas um, a lot of the things were regarding mental health you know but what i've seen in the last week alone from a lot of associates that, that i have and um, a lot of the business owners that i have and more importantly a lot of agents that that i use um who are just ordinary guys sole trade or self-employed and for the last week or two they're just their minds have been blown what are they going to do and you know how are they going to get out of this crisis and um the money worry from that that bit you know is crazy for them and um, I think now our whole point before Christmas was to highlight that there is no stigma uh, around getting help because it's getting help is what the whole thing is. The whole point of view or ability is a platform for getting access to help, for getting access to guys like yourself, for getting you know access to um, other, like you were talking about two other guys there this morning. Maybe we can get them onto the, to the podcast and videos down the line. And again, as people can see this watching this, we are not professionals at this. In fact, we haven't a clue what we're doing <laughs> here at the moment. But we're trying to open a platform for people um, to, to, you know, to come on board with it. In respect to somebody at the moment, Niall, who um, say I was already struggling with the, you know, depression and anxiety as well, currently struggling. Again, going into control measures or, or tactics or rituals. Um, have you any advice for them guys that that may be listening to this? So again. With, with depression and with with depression and anxiety, Stephen, it's all about so the it's that hopelessness, it's that need and desire for connection, it's the it's the self loathing, it's ter feelings of terror, um, that the, that that there is no safe place outside of of your 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 bedroom, and um, what I would say to you. What I would say to you is to anybody that is experiencing um, severe depression, um, severe anxiety, is reaching out, making sure that you contact your GP. They, they, you know there are there are still supports available, although it may not be face to face. There there are supports available. Um, the, in the Fermanagh area, in the Fermanagh area, there's a lot of really good counsellors. You know that that it's just a matter of reaching out and having that fourth session. Like all my all my sessions now are done via Zoom um, or Skype, and yeah. it's like yes, it is a little bit strange for the first for the first minute or two because a lot of people don't like seeing themselves the reflection of themselves. Yes. But even that can be part of the therapy because. If, if if you're uncomfortable with your own reflection on a, on a Zoom call, then then that communicates that you need to do some work around how you relate to yourself, the image that you view of yourself, and that can be changed in therapy. 
you yeah. know so all of this can be all of this can be positive um, they, so the, there, there are supports there available and I think you know like if, if you follow if you follow my Facebook page you'll see a lot of you know quotes that I would put up and you know just different thoughts that I would have and, and at the end of it I always hashtag counselling hashtag psychotherapy because there was a huge stigma to this stuff years ago yeah, yeah. you know like even not even that long ago but five, four or five years ago people just wouldn't have been you know, yeah, yeah. people wouldn't have understood what it is, and uh, you know, or the the thought you have to be mad to go to these things. Yeah. And and uh, from as far as I'm concerned, I have not yet w met one person who I have thought that person would never need therapy. <laughs> I like, yeah. literally, I've never, I've yet to meet anybody yes, who yeah. would, I would think wouldn't need therapy. We all need it. We all need it at times in our yeah. lives. Doesn't mean you need it forever. But and there's times with the ups and downs. Yeah, and there's certain ways of doing it as well, you know, because I suppose, <clears throat> personally speaking, uh, for anybody that knows me very closely, um, I'm big into motivation. I'm big into, um, you know, I would listen to hours and hours of podcasts and ebooks and audio books um, <clears throat> from guys just that I follow, you know what I mean? Successful people. And this is not success in money and business, it's success in life, which is two completely different things, you know. And that really paved the way to the event that we done in December and for anybody who is not sure what I'm talking about on the 23rd of December last year and um, we had Niall Green here and we had Jim Fawcett down as guest speakers now we had that room booked full it was booked full okay I just need to explain this now for people on the night and um, we only had a handful of people on the night but my phone was blowing up with questions so a couple of hours beforehand people had apologized said they can't go we can't make it um, and I, I put back then through the private messenger to them saying, well, that's okay. If you want us to ask anything, you know, ask a question. Niall, we couldn't keep on top of the questions that were coming in. We could not keep on top of it. And to such an extent that we said, okay, we're going to have to do this again. So when me and Niall are plotting in the background and trying to plan to do this, now we're hit with this um, uh, situation. But again, Niall, we can't do anything about that. But what we can do is try and do the likes of the Zoom call and, you know, and Skype and try and put stuff up. So the reason why I'm, I'm highlighting that now is because we're, we're going to have to end this now very shortly. But for anybody that's out there who um, thinks this was worthwhile in any way, okay, please give it a like, give it a share, um, you know, tag people into it. And, you know, send us a message on your ability, which is on Facebook. Um, you know, uh, a message that you want to see something like this again. Um, Niall, we could go down different avenues, couldn't we, all day long? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I actually, um, there's there's so many topics and so many areas of discussion um, and the questions from people, of course, that's what's going to keep the thing, uh, that's what's going to keep the thing going and like, even everything that was go has been going on in the last while, like you can't to to get your head around, you know, people's experience. You have to take your time. You just have to have to take your time. And I, I and I actually woke up this morning, Stephen, um, feeling very positive about about doing this. And and I I'm so glad that you've created this platform, you know, to because. People need it. Like, what better time, you know, yeah. than now to, to, to start this? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and thanks, th thanks for uh, giving us this opportunity. So, and again, this is all, you know, free content, free platforms. Um, as I say, your ability was created, um, you know, for for health, well-being, motivation, business, you know, everything that we kind of cram into it, because it's a platform that no, I've been looking for for a long time. And it got to the stage where you look for these things, they don't exist, you just have to make them, you know. Right. Final question here to, to finish up, um, Naya. Um, I've just got laid off work, okay? Every business doing it, not my fault. I'm an employee, I've done nothing wrong, I'm one of the best employees about. But due to circumstances, I'm now laid off, okay? We're talking maybe three months period. Um, if I'm lucky enough to get 80% of my wage, I'm more than happy and that's where gratitude comes in. But if I'm not and I get nothing, what what's the best advice to give to people at the very start because it's okay at the minute you know at the moment they might be all you know everybody's in the same boat but month one passes by month two passes by month three passes by so as i said before from jim rowan you know stand guard at the door of your mind 
but what, what would your advice be to them guys or, or your recommendations now? My recommendation, Stephen, and I know it's important to look, I, it is important to look two or three months down the line, but there's that much uncertainty. I think if you're looking three months down the line, you're, you're back into, uh, you're just back into fear, you know, and feeding into that fear and anxiety. As far as I understand, and I'm not an expert at this, you know, but the, the government, there's government guidelines and there's, there's stuff even on the NHS, you know, the NHS website on, on well-being, you know, on, on how to manage your well-being. And, and it gives advice on, you know, people that have been laid off and stuff. And, and you know, there, there, there'll be links to that. But again, um, that uncertainty, I, I just have a funny feeling, I just have a funny feeling, whatever's happening here, and this is not this is not coming from psychotherapy or any of that there this is just my own sense i think everything's going to change from this yes. and it may and and for us to assume that this is going to all be negative we don't know mm -hmm. we don't know how this is going to we don't know how like this can this could change all of our society from a society of just self-serving and looking after ourselves and and, and growing our own little uh, pots to, to a, a, a more back to you know like a community and all working together so again we don't know yeah. what, we, what, 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 what my advice would be Stephen again at this time and, I, and, I, and I'm going to regurgitate it again but because again it's important and, and ho please write this down to anybody that's listening one hour of being productive an hour of exercise an hour of social social interaction an hour of getting outside, an hour, an hour of quiet time, spend some time learning a new skill and reducing your intake of, of, of news at the minute. And, 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 and like, um, and again, I'll, I'll even bring it back to, the, to, the, to recovery, people that are in recovery with addictions, trying to live in the day, a day at a time. Let's just live it, let's just take it a day at a time. What can I do today? You know, things are just so uncertain I think that's what we need to focus on mm -hmm. and um, this you know you can really you, can, you right, really can see the panic in people <clears throat> but, but again talking about how you feel and um, sharing you know um, if you feel like you need therapy find yourself a therapist and um, if you feel like things have become you know too much for you inside contact your GP There's, there'll be you know emergency services as well you know for yeah. for people that are in the extreme end of, of mental health and well-being so so again try it try and create the structure in your day and that, that and, and working together as a family to, to do that so i hope that's yeah. answered your question no brilliant brilliant and again brilliant bit of advice and you know i think uh, really going forward here guys massive massive thank you to nail for coming on and doing this um it's a platform that we're we're trying to grow and just put out there it's a free content it's there to try and help people anybody that we can get on that has you know the background and the knowledge in their in their specialist subject like Niall has here you know come on board guys and give a bit of information out anyway just end here guys what I want to say is um you know if you found this useful in any way which we hope you did um please like and comment and, and you know share it around and um uh, just to tell us do you want us to do this anymore um, do you want us to continue with this? Do you want us to get different guests on in different sectors? I think at this moment in time, um, when people are isolated, the, the best way of, of getting you know, your voice out there is through the likes of platforms like this. And why I, why I am so confident in saying that is because after that event in December, Nile, we had like, the questions were, I think, I'm near sure by the end of that night, there was 180 questions in on Messenger. Now, you and Jim Fawcett, I was firing questions at you all the time and you were answering them bang, bang, bang the whole time. But we should have live streamed it or we should have done this. And we didn't at the time, but um, going forward, we're going to do it. So guys, um, if you want more of this here, please leave a comment. Um, I would highly suggest that you go on to Facebook and uh, follow Niall and his company page there. And if for nothing else, as Niall says, it's them wee quotes 
it's the quotes that he puts up, it's the thoughts that he puts up. Um, as I say, I posted something last night that just came to my mind, um, you know, from Jim Rowan and a lot of the other guys that I follow. So we're going to end it here, Niall. Um, as I said as well, guys, we don't know what we're doing here. We're not um, professionals in any way. <laughs> Hopefully it'll come out right. And more importantly, I hope I press record. <laughs> yeah, oh, <geez. laughs> anyway, All right, Stephen. Thank we're, you we're very gonna much. Cut it off now. Thank you very much. I will speak to you. Right. Speak to you later on. Anyway, folks, this is you, our ability. Um, thank you for listening, and we will speak to you soon. Stay safe.